On this episode, I make the front coupler. This type of coupling is known as a Norwegian coupling or a meat chopper. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a three and a half inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. Right, let's have a look at the parts. This will be made up of three separate parts. We'll call these the buffer, the body, and the hook. And I'm going to start with the buffer. This part has a 5mm thread on one end and the buffer face on the other end. So there's not going to be a lot to hold on to. We could use the 5mm shaft end, we're likely to bend it. So what I'm going to do is work from both ends, doing the heavy cutting on either end first. Alright, let's get on with it. I start with a piece of 25mm free machining steel, which is being held in the ER32 collet chuck. And I'm starting machining the buffer face end bringing the stock to diameter and then freehanding the face. I do this by working both hand wheels at the same time. It takes a bit of juggling to do this, but with a bit of practice, it's pretty achievable. And of course there's nothing critical about this shape other than its appearance. Once I have the shape roughed in, I switch to a parting tool. Put a small groove behind the buffer. This gives me a reference to where the buffer is going to finish. Then I return to working the shape. To finish the shape I use the lathe file and then some memory cloth, then I'll part off the material for this part. Once parted off, we flip the part over and chuck it up again the other way around. We'll reduce the shaft end part way, removing some of the material but leaving enough to keep it rigid. We can then come back and finish this later. Once the material is removed, we flip the part over again and start removing material from the other side. One thing to note here is if you're going to change work holding positions multiple times, you need to ensure the concentricity of your work holding is very good, otherwise you can end up with your part off centre. So I definitely wouldn't be trying this with a three jaw chart. With the desired material removed, I drill apart. This hole will form part of the coupler's shape shortly when I head over to the mill and machine a slot into it. For the slot, I'm using a 6mm end mill and making the cut in several passes. Now with the slot machine, I turn the part over and put in a collet block to finish the back of it. I could have done the entire process with the collet block, but that would have required a lot more extension on the end mill, which increases the chances of deflection and breakage. With that finished we head back to the lathe, holding the buffer face end in the collet chuck so I can machine the shaft end down to its final size.
I cut the required thread, using the tailstock for support. As I start to cut, I'll continue to advance the tailstock. This provides a little bit of pressure and ensures the die is square. Then we'll head back to the mill and do the final machining on the other end. I hold the part in a collet block to machine the rectangular centre section. I'm using a 6mm end mill to reduce cutting force as we're now holding the part on a small shaft. Making the cuts in small increments also helps reduce the cutter force. Once one side's complete, the collet block's removed from the vise and flipped over. This is where collet blocks really come into their own, allowing the part to be rotated without losing its reference. Now the top and bottom have been done, the collet block is rotated to do the sides. You'll note I line the front of the collet block up with the edge of the jaws of the vise, thus ensuring the reference is maintained. Now with the machining complete, it's time to drill a couple of holes. These will be used for fixing the hook. As always the digital readouts used to locate the holes, using a known point on the part for reference, as these holes aren't critical. I start with a spotting drill and then finish with the final drill size. With the part complete, I take it over to the bench for deburring and finishing with a file. Right, with the buffer complete, it's time to move on to the body. The way I'm going to tackle this part is to start the shaft end and work back, turning all the external features and then flipping it to drill out the inside. Once again I'm using the free machining steel rod that I was using in the previous part. Once I've made the first cut, I stop and check the diameter. I then use this to set the digital readout accurately.
once I've finished most of the features, I start to part off. I'm only cutting a groove at this point, and this will allow me to finish the front of the part. The body cleaned up, it's time to cut the thread. And once again I use the tailstock to support the die holder, advancing it as I start to make the cut. This can then be retracted when several threads have been cut. I then finish up by drilling the through hole before fully parting off. Now it's time to flip the part over and finish the inside, this time holding the threaded end in the collet. The feature I need to machine here is a 12mm diameter flat bottom hole, so I start with a standard drill bit, removing most of the material. I then switch to a 12mm end mill, as this is a bit on the small side for using a boring bar. One thing to note if you're drilling down with a 4th flute end mill like I am, is they're not designed to centre cut, so pre-drilling out the centre is important otherwise you'll just get a hot part and go nowhere. Now just before I remove this from the lathe, a quick test fit and then I can deburr it. And it's good to go. One last thing that I forgot to mention on this part, was I actually made the shaft a bit longer than it needed to be. This was to provide more support in the collet, and then I just cut it off with a hacksaw afterwards. The only consideration here was making sure I'd cut the threads far enough for when this cut was made. Now finally the hook, I'm going to cut this out of a piece of 3mm mild steel plate and all I need to consider here is a bit of shaping and a couple of holes. So I decided the quickest way to set this out was to cut out a one to one drawing of it and transfer the lines on with a marker pen. I'm a bit of a fan of these Milwaukee ink saw pens, the ink seems to hold a little bit longer than the sharpie markers I used prior. Of course the other way to do this would have been to use layout blue and then stripe it, but as there's nothing critical about this part, I thought I might as well cheat. For the shaping, I roughed it out using a hacksaw, before moving to the belt grinder, and then moving to a hand file. The final step before assembly is drilling the holes. I laid these out accurately and seem to punch the holes, so they will have the correct spacing. Now on to assembly. As I haven't installed the timber buffer yet, I'm having to use a couple of extra washers at the rear for mounting the body. Once that's in I move to the buffer, noting I've also fitted a spring in there. That'll provide the dampening to the buffer. Then finally comes the hook. I'm sure this is where the meat chopper name comes from, as it looks pretty fair sticking out the front, but obviously it's designed to auto couple with the big hook shape. Versions of the Norwegian coupler have been used here for freight trains until recently, although they were beefed up from the earlier version. I understand they're now phasing them out for the Cheney coupler. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share. Catch you next time.